I would like to welcome everyone to the first of us, uh, this series of talks, uh, which is um, organized by our Faculty of Arts and Design. It's entitled um, Arts, Design and Architecture Talks. Kıvanç uh, Kılınç um, Hocam, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Yeşim Hanım. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, to the very first uh, of our new uh, lecture uh, talk series um, by the Faculty of Art and Design at Kadir Has University. Um, um, we'll, we're, con we're convening here today to listen to um, Murat Tabanoğlu, who is going to give the opening lecture uh, of the fall semester uh, for the faculty members and students and our esteemed audience. Um, the Another reason, why we're hosting him. And we would like to thank him very much for being here uh, with us tonight. Um, is because we've uh, just launched um, a, a new joint master's program led and coordinated by Murat Davanoğlu. Um, we're going to hear about this program today as well from him, but this lecture will cover uh, his recent projects uh, across the globe, both in Turkey and in, in the international arena. Um, we're going to also um, hear about um, uh, hear from him with the with his edu you know uh, education educator hat, let's say, um, as well as a um, well-known architect, um, touching upon the issue of architectural education uh, and more specifically preparing architecture students to tackle um, and offer sustainable design solutions to the current urban and ecological issues. Obviously we'll have, um, I'm sure, uh, a lot of follow-up questions, uh, both from uh, uh, the team here, but also from our esteemed audiences uh, this evening. Um, how we're gonna do that very briefly before I give the floor uh, to the Dean of the Faculty of Art and Design, Banu Hoca, for her introductory remarks. Um, and then to uh, Murat Bey for the lecture. Um, I'll uh, we'll keep uh, the you know the uh, the participants at Zoom um, uh, their their microphones muted um, uh, for the for the duration of the talk and also the Q and A. We would like to ask them to please uh, ask their questions, direct their questions, both through Zoom and YouTube using the chat box uh, function. Um, so um, that would be, I think, the most efficient way to receive as many questions as we could uh, within the limited time we have. Um, so before, uh, I mean, without further ado, Banu Hocam, Banu Manav, uh, Professor Dr. Banu Manav, uh, who's the Dean of the Faculty of Art and Design at uh, Kadir Has, uh, I'll give the floor to you uh, for your remarks and then um, I'll take it back <laughs> to only to give it to, uh, Murat Davanoğlu. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Kvanç Hocam, for this nice introduction. On behalf of the Faculty of Art and Design, I want to greet everyone who participate us now. I express my gratitude to Murat Tabanoğlu for his valuable contribution to our faculty starting from this academic year. Also, I want to express my gratitude to our rector, Professor Dr. Sondan Durukanoğlu Faiz for her valuable support starting from the first kickoff meeting till today. In line to the Kadir Has University new education model as being one of our partners in the architecture department, Tabanol architects are the mentors of the second grade architecture studio as well. They do not only participate to the studio classes, but also take active role at our project-based education. On this special day, that's the first lecture of art, design, and architecture talks, Murat Tabanol will deliver the opening lecture of the fall semester. At the same time, we are all excited to share you the joint graduate program between Tabanol Architecture and Kadiraz University, as Kıvanç Hocam said, which is led and coordinated by him as well. I will not go into deep because he will explain with his own words. So let's listen the rest from him. Thank you a lot. Um, thank you, Banu Hocam. Uh, just 
I mean, just out of habit, let me introduce Brata Banoğlu uh, to to the audience, to our audience here. Of course, he needs no introduction <laughs> for any of us here. Also, I'm sure for the great majority of those watching us, um, even if they're outside the field of architecture, um, uh, I'm sure they've heard his name and are familiar with lots, uh, many of his projects. Um, he studied architecture at Vienna Technical University and graduated in 1992. He founded Tabanol Architects in cooperation with Dr. Hayati Tabanol in Istanbul in 1990. Today, um, his award-winning practice is developing projects on four continents, um, and we'll, we'll be seeing uh, examples of that uh, this evening. He lectures at universities and various international platforms, besides his atelier programs at um, universities in Turkey. In addition to his national and international contributions as a jury member, such, such as at AIA and WAF, Tabanoğlu served on the master jury for the 2013 cycle of the Aga Khan Award for Architecture, um, along with several prize-winning projects um, like the RIBA International Awards in 2011 and 13, respectively, for Loft Gardens and Bodrum International Airport, Beyazıt State Library, which was a finalist for Ms. van der Rohe Awards, and finalist for Aga Khan Architecture Awards in 2019, among several others. Um, his worldwide projects comprise a wide range of building types, and he's responsible for a number of ongoing international projects, including the key sites in Turkey, like Atatürk Cultural Center, um, Tabanlı Architects' third AKM project, and Tersani Istanbul, that is Halic Shipyard, an urban transformation project, and both under construction and uh, the former nearing completion, in fact. Um, designer of the Pavilion of Turkey at Expo 2000 Hanover, the architect has curated exhibitions and is the designer of the various installations exhibited on many platforms, including the first Pavilion of uh, Turkey at the 14th International Architecture Exhibition at the Venice Biennale. Um, again, thank you all for being here with, that, with us this evening. And without further ado, please uh, let me now give the floor to Rata Bandolo. Thank you very much. Good evening for everybody. This is really my first and first lecture. So as every project, uh, that evening was also a project for us. Uh, we, we research how architects are giving uh, lectures. <laughs> Um, I look how Herzog or Demeron is giving a lecture in Harvard or some others. And then I, I researched that uh, it's very personal. So they are just um, explaining what they made in the last years. And it's, uh, it's not a hectic. So uh, because I was a little bit... Uh, because I'm not like you, an academician. I'm, an, let's say, a half academician. So if you give the first lecture, um, I think it was a real project for me. Um, Gonja will help me through this. Uh, Gonja, maybe we can go further. Yeah. Um, I think um, it's very important. Um, where do you live as an architect? And I'm now around 60 years and, um, and I think 50 years of my life, I was in Istanbul traveling, of course, a lot, but I was then 10 years in Vienna uh, for study and just going around. But I think Istanbul and, um, and I want to start with this uh, nice photo from uh, Aragüler. Uh, it's it's a little bit chaotic. Uh, I want a black went white photo, and I like. Uh, and for me, this is Istanbul. The waves uh, still uh, the the ships they are still there, uh, traveling around, and also other ships, of course, minarets, uh, churches, synagogues. Next, please. And um, when I came back, uh, next please, uh, Gonja. Um, uh, we, uh, 
I saw how I think everybody here, not the young people, because uh, for them also in the last 15 years, it changed a lot. But uh, I think Istanbul changed a lot uh, beginning from uh, many centuries. And then um, uh, there are some nice uh, photos. Um, the last one is from a friend of me, Jamal Endam. Uh, he made this photo from uh, the tower, uh, the, the tower for our exhibition in Antwerp many years ago. And here you see how uh, dramatically the city changed also from the heart of the old city. Next, please. And also uh, when we are looking to the maps from the 40s and 60s, the population is growing up. Um, uh, I'm born in 1960. Uh, can you go back, uh, Gonja? Then we can see uh, Istanbul, 1.5 million people. And now we are over 17 million. And in these days, uh, maybe the population, maybe half Muslim and half uh, still Armenians, Greek people, white Russians, Jewish people. And I grown up with all these communities together. My father brought me to the Greek restaurants, to the Armenian. But now 80s and then 2000, dramatically uh, growing up of the population till 2010 and now over 50. Uh, Istanbul is growing up. When I was a child, I remember there was no bridge. So my father had a KFR Volkswagen uh, coming from the Germany uh, after his studies in Hannover. Um, we had to wait uh, long hours to get the ferry to go to the Asian side. Now we have the third bridge, we have tunnels. Um, also here we can see on different maps and as Tabando architects, we start to research um, how our city is de developing, where we are living. Next, please. And also, we looked uh, the plans of Istanbul, uh, starting, of course, from the old city, and then uh, how the modernism started with uh, Henry Prost. And for us, it was also important uh, what was in the, uh, uh, the new maps of Istanbul. Of course, these boulevards, uh, the first boulevards we can see uh, in, in the old city of Istanbul, but then the main dramatically change which is coming till today is the, I think in the 60s, um, in the Menderes time when he started with the boulevard, which was growing up from, uh, from the seaside uh, and going up to the north, uh, which was maybe the beginning also uh, of the uh, bridgeways, uh, the first bridge, second, and now the third bridge. And uh, dramatically, the state is uh, start to change. It's a nice photo showing 2010. And the new downtown of the new Istanbul is now on the, one of the hills, of the seven hills of Istanbul. Next, please. And here on some several maps, and um, we researched these maps when I was the creator of uh, Venice Biennale uh, some years ago. Um, we researched uh, in that scale uh, this dramatic change on the boulevard, uh, which was coming from the 60s, from um, farm houses to first to factories for uh, like Deva, Ezajibashi, and uh, others uh, like Fako. And all these uh, parcels, then they turned in the last 15 years uh, uh, to new developments. And we are a part of it as architects. Next, please. And here is a nice photo again showing uh, the dramatic um, changes um, starting next to the boulevard. And what is behind is coming uh, in the next years. Next, please. And here we can see um, the, on the boulevard how these uh, farmhouses uh, uh, change to new mixed-use developments. Uh, 
it was first the big banks came here and then we see the first uh, metro city from uh, architects Don Tekeli and Simon Sisa, where uh, offices, residences, and shopping centers came together. And our first project as a young architect uh, was um, the Canyon uh, development. Um, and it was on the land of the Ezajibashi group, which was a former factory building for pharmaceutical. And then um, it was um, between the boulevard and the neighborhood behind um, a new uh, connection. Uh, also, the first real metro of uh, subway of Istanbul was here. So we wanted to connect also first time. The people from the subway uh, are also a part of the new development. Um, so they are then connected. Uh, during uh, when the boulevard is the ball, so they are having a tunnel coming down from the tunnel in one of the levels, and that was the first time in Istanbul that the people arriving in a building, uh, which was uh, at that time uh, the beginning, and then all the other developments near to it um, uh, uh, became a part of the story. Um, and also, um, the main uh, thing of this project is uh, we wanted that um, the people are working here, living here, or coming here for shopping, or for other reasons, are seeing each other. So they are not in closed boxes. So, um, so it's a neighborhood, and uh, it's a connection, uh, connection from the boulevard uh, to the neighborhood behind. And uh, here we can see the inner heart of Canyon, uh, where we celebrate not only to go shopping, there are restaurants also that place can turn easily, uh, mostly on Sundays or Fridays, so a concert place. And uh, I was many times criticized to make an open uh, shopping area uh, because of the wind and etc. But I was always saying, um, and in these days we can see we don't like to be on these big co air conditioned halls. So we want to mirror on the fresh air. And this is one of the samples that we designed many, many years ago. And um, okay, maybe we would see not a concert like this in the next years, but maybe coming soon. Uh, but uh, so here we can see a transformation of, its, um, of a shopping area uh, to a concert area. So that was one of the main purposes of the building. Uh, the next building on the boulevard, so when you are an architect and make a design like this, so the other projects are coming, the, uh, the clients are looking if they like it, so they are coming to you with a new idea. And that was a completely different uh, uh, purpose or another building type um, to deal with it because it was an existing structure there. It was made, it's next to Canyon, and it's on the boulevard again, but it's long, like a long train. It's two, more than 200 meters. Uh, it has big spans, which is nice. And, um, and we came with this idea, and I think the building looks like still the same uh, in the first early days. We said we keep the main structure of the building, and we make uh, different types of apartments. Um, and they are different sizes. And these are like long stay apartments. It's between a hotel and, um, and, uh, and a real uh, residence. Uh, there is a restaurant underneath. Uh, there is a hairdresser. Of course, there's also a pool inside, but um, it's, it's a part of the boulevard. People are coming to the restaurant. Uh, and these apartments, uh, typically, this is not a typical family apartment. It's more uh, single people or uh, people, uh, they left their home uh, um, and looking for a new life. They are here or young couples are here. And so it's a different life uh, to live here. And also it turned also to home offices. Many colleagues from Ankara, like Enis, uh, for example, and Joel has uh, two offices here. I think one is his office, one is his apartment. So it's like a, 
uh, it's like a different um, style of living. And um, he, uh, they sold the apartments uh, in a short time, and then they bought the land next to it. It was a little bit behind. And then the client said to me, can we not make the same? It's easier for you as well. No, we said, uh, I think we need something different from the same family as an architecture, uh, but uh, it should be longer. And um, because it's a new building, uh, uh, so we made uh, you had the positive and this is like the negative. This is like the man and the wife. So that can be the, the, the um, uh, negative part. So negative are these uh, loggias or balconies. They are hidden uh, from the wind coming from the north. It gives shadows and they are a part of the living room. And uh, we keep again the, the concrete structure of the building like the first building. Uh, and then that was the first of at this time uh, for Istanbul. And many people uh, moved from the first building to the second building. <laughs> that was also nice. Uh, this is the third project we made, a completely different client. Uh, one is uh, a guy who, who bought many lands in coming from Anatolia, uh, bought many land uh, pieces in Istanbul, uh, the famous Tatlıcı family, and the other one is a market owner. They have nothing to do with buildings, so I had to travel with them all the world to showing uh, a nice um, tall building. Uh, we went to Chicago, to London, to New York, different places. And of course, they wanted the longest tower. Um, and I said, okay, long tower, but uh, if you have an apartment in a tower like this, how still you can open your window? Because it's windy, it's loud from the boulevard. Then we came out with an idea to have a winter garden in front of it. Also, uh, because of the sustainability, it's nice if you have a like a palto and um, uh, a nice um, uh, dress, and then uh, you you have a uh, wind uh, jacket. Uh, so normally, typically in the middle, uh, a tower is uh, you have the glass. Normally, you cannot open it, but we made these winter gardens and then created these balconies or gardens. And also this part we wanted um, uh, to be fresh ventilated. So I asked many engineers at the end, I found a, a German uh, engineer. We went to him, I said, maybe he will come with difficult ideas, but he made a model like this. And then he said, do you smoke? I said sometimes, and then he made a smoke test, a very easy one. And now, uh, if you go there, you can see the the fresh air is coming uh, uh, from uh, down and going to the top without any machinery, and that's working very well. So it was made in some offices like normal Foster made this in Comat's Bank in Frankfurt was never made in a residence, and for us, uh, for us, was very important. And that gives also a nice scale. Um, if you see this photo, you don't feel you are in a tower. Next, please. <clears throat> and sometimes in Istanbul can be folky like this as well. And this is the new boulevard. And then um, also in this boulevard, one of our last projects, we made an office building. Um, but this office building has also a long part, the tower part, and also another longer part going on the back side to the boulevard. You can uh, enter the building from the boulevard, going through the building, and then uh, coming to the neighborhood. So it's like a passage. And, uh, and uh, here you can see the, the, the back part, um, which is connected to the neighborhood. Uh, because I like to design buildings which you, where you can go through the building. And also there is another entrance when you are coming from the canyon on the other side. So it has three entrances. 
so it's then a busy building. It's not one small door. And then, uh, so you have three main entrances uh, from different levels. And if we look to the all other towers around, uh, all these buildings are like one identity. But here I don't, because the client didn't know if this is one tower for one firm, uh, I said, so I divide the firm in five pieces and then every piece uh, can be another firm. And here, if you go there, it's like this. On the top is the owner, uh, Mr. Zorlo, and all the other parts are different firms. So each gives, uh, the architecture gives an identity to the tower. So from the beginning, I think that was from the, this is the entrance. And this is when you enter from the back entrance uh, from the neighborhood behind. Uh, you have then uh, many like showrooms and also some meeting rooms. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, why this is looking like a little bit like the airspace because it's Vestal inside our one of the biggest um, TV producers like Sony in the world. Um, this is maybe let's say the second part um, uh, here as architects. Um, we like to make also exhibitions. Uh, uh, sometimes we like to be creators. Sometimes we want to feel like artists. And uh, first, I want to show you uh, the first one is uh, as Gonja. The uh, okay, that was very important for us. Uh, they selected me as a creator to be in Venice Biennale. Uh, and that was the building when I was in Venice uh, after many years. Um, I visited Venice Biennale when I was a student and I saw Aldo Rossi's ship, moving ship coming. Uh, and uh, since that, I was every year in Venice Biennale, but just as a guest. And first time I had to design something. And uh, uh, we met Ram Kolhas. Uh, he was the main creator of the Venice Biennale at this time. And he said for each country, uh, uh, we want to see the 100 years of your past. But then I said, in these years, I was 50. I said, I know only 50 years and um, not the 100. So I'm not an uh, architectural historian. So I said, and I talk about my memories. Um, and then I started to work with five different architects in our team, in our architecture office. And then um, I say to them my memories. And um, uh, for example, these are some shots uh, from different parts of Istanbul where I was growing up, uh, some apartment houses, schools, old buildings, and uh, to show from a big scale uh, till to the carpet in an apartment and the building or the exhibition space we we created was an outside and inside and all the exhibition from the artist was inside and inside uh, outside of the tunnel black tunnel and inside of the black tunnel after i talked with many architects like mehmet konurak i asked them what shall i do inside and he said make personal and for me personally, it was the uh, Istanbul uh, Atatürk Cultural Center. Oh, my daughter from London is also here. Nina, hello. <laughs> she wants to be an also an architect. She start in AA, uh, I think, mostly in the next days. Hi. <laughs> OK, um, then we made another uh, exhibition. They invited us to Berlin, Architektur Gallery Berlin. It's a very small gallery in Karl Marx uh, Alley, but very important. And normally they invite not everybody. I don't like to say this normally, but that's so. And then they said uh, I was uh, the Turk, first Turkish architect to be invited. And I came with a very political project. Uh, I said to them, I want to show the old. Uh, opera house from my father that was on the left shop window and on the right one 
uh, we have the new project. At this time, it was nothing there on Taksim case. And first time I showed the project in Berlin, very political. Yesterday, as you know, maybe they selected the new president, Scholz. Um, I think it's very important, uh, new beginning now for Germany uh, after so many years, Merkel. So that was the exhibition in Berlin. Uh, we made inside an archive wall uh, with many parts, real parts of the old building. You can see the aluminum facade, some uh, ceramic uh, wall uh, of, um, uh, of Saadi Diran designs, many books, uh, pieces um, uh, of the um, backstage, uh, some lamps, materials. Next, please. And this is a collage of old and new um, materials. So it's it's a like a mock-up, but it's in a different way because there are pieces from the old and pieces that we are putting new. And that was like a test for us uh, in front of many international, mostly German-speaking architects, to show a project like this. Um, as maybe you know, uh, maybe young people does know, but uh, uh, the story of the uh, Istanbul Opera House, because I say Opera House because at this time it was the Opera House of Istanbul, started many years ago. Next, please. And after uh, Prost made a city planning for this area, for this modern it Istanbul, at this time, he invited a an, um, French architect, August Pere. At this time, Istanbul municipality was responsible mm -hmm. to make the opera house. Uh, they made a building, but it was in raw construction. But my father came in 60s back from Germany and, and he had to de redesign this building to a new cultural center, Atatürk Cultural Center. These are some photos from the first uh, project. Uh, uh, one year after the project was finished, after 17 years, you have to imagine, 17 years, and then one year la later, um, the building was in fire. This is the next day, I can remember, I was nine. And then, uh, he was able to do the building again, a little bit quicker in seven years. And then it opened again. And it was many years our uh, architecture culture center, Atatürk culture center. Uh, this is a very interesting building. Uh, can you go back? And it's, it's a painting and um, it's from Jihad Burak. I saw this. Uh, in 2007, it was an exhibition for Jihad Burak in Istanbul Modern that we designed many years ago. And um, then I saw this painting and I said, that must be my father. And in reality, that was my father. I said, why Jihad Burak? He made so many paintings, uh, but why my father? Then I researched because I didn't know about the story. And then I learned that Jihad Burak was an interior designer. And when my father made the uh, Opera House of Istanbul, uh, also Jihad Burak somehow with his relations uh, uh, should be the interior designer and uh, of the um, uh, Atatürk Culture Center. And um, as you can see, my father was uh, little, very uh, German, always in gray, uh, always with a tile. Jihad Burak was a Bohemian coming from Paris, drinking nice wine. And then um, I think they hated each other. Uh, my father doesn't want him. And then uh, he took him away from the building. I don't know why. I think uh, it was a, not a good relation. And after years, uh, Jihad Burak, uh, because of this hate, he made this uh, painting. And I hope in the opening of the new operas, I will show you this painting, which is now a family has this painting and show you. It's, it's a part of the history. Next, please. 
And um, then many years, the building, as you know, was our cultural center. But then uh, many reasons, then we had the Gezi Park demonstrations, then it stopped and they wanted a renovation for us. At the end, a uh, decision was made, uh, it will come a new building. Um, but what's a new building? You can design completely new, or as we decided to make, we start not from zero because we had many memories, mostly here the academicians, maybe young people doesn't know so much about the building, but we, had, we went to many concerts, operas, first time, maybe first now in front of the building. So somehow we liked the building because not it's the best architecture of the world, but it's, it's a part of our memories. So we decided to keep the main um, feeling of the building, uh, the facade that you can see through. But then uh, inside, like my father made in the second design, I want to change the inside and then make a new hall. Um, I, we researched and then we decided that we have to have a bigger capacity. Istanbul needs a bigger uh, opera uh, hall. Uh, more than 2,000 people instead of 1,300. So we decided that the concert hall, which was underneath the hall, should be not anymore here. It, it will be in the annex. So this main building has only the main hall, uh, the main opera hall, with the main big foyer when you are coming inside. Um, if you will come in the next days to the building, and then you can see uh, again, uh, the staircase, it was there, designed from my father. You will see there again, a nice reconstruction one-to-one. -one. Or you can see the balustrades. It was also in the 60s, designed from my father. Is a part of the new form. Is again, nothing from the zero. Or the clever hand walls coming from Anatolian uh, 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 stone yards are there again with the same motif or the same color of the beige uh, stone coming from Bursa is again here. Uh, the facade is the same, but with a new technology because now we can make it um, uh, better for against the earthquake and much more lighter, but with the same feelings. Uh, when you are coming inside in this bowl, so everybody asking me what is in this bowl, uh, first, on the walls, uh, you can see the, the new red tiles. The red color is a new color. My father's time, it was black, so I want to change it to, to red because of opera, maybe. Uh, and then uh, these tiles are have the same motif. They are a little bit bigger uh, uh, than the former one. Uh, and they are forming the new ball, the outside shell. Inside, we have a completely new wooden hole. And like all the uh, old, uh, new and uh, old classic um, opera houses, it has a U shape. And the, the form of the, the ball or this moon or cupola, it's coming from, starting from the shape of the building, from the shape how these 2,000 people are sitting inside. Uh, I wanted everybody seeing good uh, and also hearing good. So acoustically, this is a, also a proved form. Also the, the, the Oslo Opera House, which was recently finished, not recently, five more than five years, but one of the new opera houses. When, um, when you look to the competition site, you can see it was given as a U-shape. So operas, uh, mostly also in, like in the old operas, you have this U shape. And the other thing was uh, chandelier, uh, which was forgotten in the new operas, which was in the old uh, opera houses. So we want to design a new chandelier, but uh, I don't want this chandelier when there is something on the stage. And then when you have something on the stage, uh, so the chandelier is hidden. So it's in the, um, it's coming up. 
you will see this uh, after the opening. So this is the second part of the culture center. This is the new connection when you are coming from the technical universe of Istanbul or from the Atatürk library or from all these, uh, from Nishantashi going, you want to go to Taksim, uh, you will take this new place. Um, it's, it's a new entrance uh, guiding you to the Taksim. And there will be uh, uh, the theater and concert all here. It's a very nice library for art and design and architecture. Um, there is a place for children. Uh, they can take um, lessons for music or there is a um, music studio, so you can go there. Um, multi a cinema uh, for culture, uh, like the cinema take in the old days in, uh, in, in Beolo. So, and then this library and some little cafes. And uh, uh, I was very proud that um, uh, when Jem Hakko, uh, for his father, Vitali, uh, he gave 15 books for this library. And uh, so I hope it will grow up. So it will be, uh, this is the children's center. It will be a design store like uh, all the um, cultural centers in the world where you can buy uh, CDs or pieces from the building or about something about music. And there is a little like a still exhibition space uh, where you can see old instruments. And on the top of the center, um, we will have a very nice restaurant looking uh, from the second bridge till to the old city. Next, please. Oh, this is another project we are involved since many years. Uh, it's next to uh, our uh, university. May I say our? Uh, I, <laughs> I'm learning. Uh, Kadir Has University, and it was the old uh, shipyards of Istanbul. Uh, before we started this project, um, I was involved in an exhibition in Antwerp. Um, after Venice Biennale, and then uh, here we showed, um, we worked with uh, artists like Rafik Anadol. Um, he made a, at this time, he was not famous like today, but um, he, uh, he said, uh, I will make a digital map uh, from Antwerp and Istanbul. Uh, it was a three months uh, exhibition, uh, and then uh, on these, uh, on the right, you can see Port Antwerp. Uh, you can see live uh, where, how the ships are entering Antwerp and then about the tonnage of the port. So it's like a data center, which is a moving one. And that was a nice graphic. Also in this uh, exhibition, we brought some pieces of the oldest um, harbor of Istanbul, uh, one to one to see. Also the chain of Istanbul when it, um, 1453, when the Ottomans came with their ships, there was a chain on the Golden Horn. We, we showed this also here. Pieces like a museum or a digital art. So that was the main purpose of the exhibition. And to bring uh, Belgian people and Turkish people together. And uh, this is the projects where we are uh, working since many years. Uh, of course, we made a research as always. Um, it was many years, the shipyards of uh, Istanbul from the Byzant side, then Ottoman, and then Republic time. Um, the main difference uh, between the Venice Biennale, uh, Venice shipyards, and Arsenale, and here was um, it, it, they stopped somehow um, the build to build new ships in, in Arsenale in Venice. But here in Istanbul, uh, they made uh, every year a new ship. That's why they wanted, uh, they want, uh, needed new uh, buildings uh, because the ship's uh, technology changed and they started demolished the old buildings and made uh, bigger buildings, bigger hangars and for other needs. So it, it was a part, so for example, this hall was there, 
and uh, it was the biggest hall. Um, there are eight very nice cranes on the site. One is looking uh, very nice, like a ballerina. The other one, like an elephant, or um, it's like sculptures. Um, we started to to learn from the um, site, from the uh, volumes. Um, nice, and um, it has very nice view from the shipyard to the other part of Istanbul. Once it was very green. Uh, it was a part. Um, uh, of the Ottoman uh, uh, gardens, uh, there is already a kiosk still there. And when we came there, it was at this situation. And then uh, when you make a project like this, so you have to research on the site and not stay in your computers on the paper. So you are learning from the layers. Uh, and then as an architect, you have to react. Uh, it's not only going to the uh, authorities and saying this is an old building, you made a survey, uh, and then this is your new building. It, for this one, we made many uh, researches. And here you can see uh, in this rendering, um, there are many, as you can see, there are many, there is a small, uh, the brick one in the middle, it's uh, like an Art Deco style. On the right one is more Ottoman, Byzantine, Ottoman time. And then uh, another building, and on the left, instead of the steel hall, we made in the same messing a new architecture. And then you will see when this is finished, and you will uh, see, you can see different layers. But at the end, this is one hotel, for example. So then as a hotel guest, then you can see either in one of these brick buildings or in the Art Deco or the, on the new one. So it will be a new challenge also in the, uh, Istanbul hotel uh, part, but they are not only hotels. There is also a new museum designing with um, a Grim Show for uh, the Koch family. It will be one of the museums, or there are also apartments, also there are art galleries. And in some days, there will be the first contemporary Istanbul, first time in some of the buildings. It will be like a soft opening. And the whole building uh, will be finished in phases, which is very good uh, because uh, a, a building part uh, site like this, it should be not, not open in once. So you are learning uh, from uh, others. Uh, here again, some uh, what's happened here. Uh, we have also a very nice archive already. This is a, this building was not all, uh, anymore there so we are making a reconstruction of the building also we are we will use the sea sites and then what we are doing we are keeping the the sea line which was changed with these um, you can see you go inside it's it's very organic it changed also in the last uh, years um, normally the client wanted to add like in galata port uh, a concrete part, but we decided to keep and just renovate the, the line. It is also it's it was not uh, described from others. I don't know uh, how long we are. Is it still time or shall I finish? How do you feel? No, we have time. Sure. Yeah. OK. We have time for now, another 10, 15 minutes. Yes. OK. OK. Now let's go and change the subject and go uh, to, to Summerbeck, uh, to Bodrum. Uh, since many years I'm in Bodrum, uh, we had many projects and nothing was happening. So I was very, as an architect, uh, I like, it's better not to build something in Bodrum. But uh, <laughs> this is the only project we built. And uh, in the last years, um, it's uh, a very nice, you know, Bodrum is a half island and this place is also a part of a half island for himself. So um, it's a very nice seaside. Um, it's very topographic, like the most of the seasides of Istanbul, uh, of uh, Bodrum, sorry. And um, we wanted to create something uh, which is, um, um, a part of the of the topography and um, 
And if you go take a boat and go by the side of Bodrum, it changed a lot. So we wanted something. Uh, if uh, if I look, the only place I like there is from Turgut Jansever many years ago, Demir Tatiko, you, the, it's hiding, you don't see them. But all the new developments in, in Bodrum, uh, they are saying always make two floors, but everybody making three, four floors. I don't know how, but <laughs> but here we started, we say to our client, uh, we like the stone as it's there. We don't want to make white buildings or stone buildings. So then I visited in Switzerland um, in house from uh, many years ago from Peter Suntor. Uh, where you use, um, in German, they say Stankbeton. So you, you take the parts of the stone, mix with the cement, and then you have the walls. And that was how we started. Um, some people are saying, of course, when you cover it with a nice granite stone or other stones, but this is the finished uh, product. Um, so it was not easy uh, to make a product like this, to make a facade like this. And uh, but also the floors are from the same stone parts where we found on the sides. So the walls and the, the, the floors are from the topography. And then we added just uh, some wooden parts as frames. Or if there was uh, more needed uh, against the wind, some aluminum parts. And these uh, villas are like long stay, not apartments, villas, let's say. So people are uh, staying here. They don't, they hate when you say that, uh, are you going to, to your room? So they are saying to my villa. So they are feeling that they are like their homes. So it's not a hotel. It's not their own villa. They, you can rent here for the whole year or some months. Uh, there is also a part where you have um, you know, some bars, restaurants, a library, a patisserie where you can meet people from outside. And also during the day, swim. And um, so that was a new, uh, not only architecture, also a new lifestyle uh, to create in Bodrum. Um, these are maybe Gonja, we can go very quickly. Some projects we have done in uh, uh, Africa uh, in three different places. The, the first one we made in Tripoli. It was before Gaddafi died, I remember. They say that he came also once to the site to see. And that is a convention center in a park, uh, but not looking like a typical convention center. It has arcades around and they are made from with it like a bronze tool. Uh, so against the um, uh, sun and then um, uh, sand storms. And the other one is a completely different um, thing. I went to 2011 to this island, Equatorial New Guinea. There was an existing uh, exhibition building, a convention building, and um, the client wanted from us a, a, a new a boutique let's say convention room we designed. Um, when I was there, I was, uh, I liked this greenery and then all the facade is a three dimensional uh, computer made um, 3D mesh, we can say with different patterns. Also inside uh, it's going, this is the red point the island. It's uh, on the left part of Africa. This is the night. And uh, the third project after this one is in Dakar. Again, complete the new environment outside of the city. And then we designed, uh, we designed a wooden shell a roof uh, on steel pillars uh, around um, a pool. And not one building, one box. They are different, um, like the Congress part, the library, the museum, a restaurant is there and some other exhibition rooms and everything is under this wooden roof. This is the restaurant. 
And um, we made everything mostly in beige and bronze. And uh, in the opening, I was very happy. It was very nice. They came with very nice colors. So it was like the architecture was like the background. And uh, um, I was very happy to see this opening with people together. And everything started with the tree of the, uh, of the philosophy of this roof. Uh, the last project uh, we want to show, Gonja, is a small scale project. It's a, but we worked maybe more than 10 years. It's in the heart of the old city of Istanbul. It was a former uh, kitchen for poor people, and then it changed uh, to a um, library. Uh, it was a part of the Bayezid Library, which is the main archive uh, of uh, Turkish um, books and newspapers and magazines. And, but this is like a boutique part uh, of this uh, library. In the Ottoman time, it turned to a library, and somehow, it was damaged in the 80s with these concrete pillars. And then uh, we had to clean it up, but very carefully, of course. And then now uh, it's, a, it's a library for the old, it's like a lab, uh, book museum uh, for the old Ottoman nice books. Um, this was the courtyard when we came in. Um, and then we turned to this place um, and then, uh, and also we have a very nice uh, this the courtyard. And then uh, we have also a very nice reading room where many students from Istanbul University are coming. It has also in the backside a very nice um, courtyard. And these are the glass boxes uh, where you can have the best Ottoman archive, the books uh, where you can visit and research. Okay, uh, maybe just a few things about our master program um, that we designed in the last months um, with my colleagues. And um, I said, um, because we started with the Antwerp exhibition uh, many years ago, and then we compared Istanbul and Antwerp as one of the main Turkish uh, port city and then one of the biggest uh, important cities in Antwerp. But then I decided uh, for this time to, to research the three cities. Why these three cities? Because um, Hamburg, as you know, is one of the most important harbor cities since many years. And it's developed maybe, let's say, 90%. Uh, it's a new, completely harbor city, very famous in the world. We have now the Philharmonie from Hearts of Demeron. Everybody is proud in Germany about this building. Very nice concerts. But when I was there with my students many years ago, they had some problems as well. So because the real Hamburg is a little bit different, people also, and the new part, the old Hamburg is different, and the new part, I don't know, it's... In, uh, we have to study this also when it's also something finished. Then Trieste, Trieste was many years um, uh, from the uh, Habsburg, the main harbor from Austrians. But then it's Italy, it's like it is, uh, it's nothing touched now. And, and then we heard Hamburg uh, harbor uh, business people, they bought the house of Trieste. So I think it will start something. Uh, so it's nothing touched. Many things touch in Hamburg. And we are in the middle as Istanbul. As you know, there are many projects like I showed you in the Golden Horn, the new Gata Port projects and the new competition on the Golden Horn. We have the University Kadir has the Bilgi University and the Patriarch there. Uh, and many synagogues around. I think we have to compare these cities. And uh, first of all, uh, in these three semesters, we will start with um, researching to make a master plan, but not like the city planners are doing. We will uh, research the history, 
one to one also from different scales that like i showed you in our exhibitions uh then we will visit the cities i hope uh we can make uh, we can start to travel we will go to hamburg to trieste uh, then we will uh, be with our friends uh, they are from hamburg from italy from austria we will make workshops with them in the second part in the second semester uh, we will be more like an architect, so we will design some parts of the master plan and make many workshops. And in the last part, in the last semester, we will be like more a creator. We will work, uh, we will uh, be with uh, some artists. I will invite some creators from outside of, the, uh, of Turkey. Uh, they will come and share their uh, uh, ideas with us. So it will be so three different worlds, three different scales, and I hope it will be something new because I will be very happy to, to share my uh, experiences uh, as an architect, as a creator, as somebody living in Istanbul and abroad Istanbul uh, with young people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um... For this wonderful talk, uh, very inspiring projects. Um, well, I mean, personally, as I was growing up uh, as an architecture student, um, uh, I was aware of your projects and then I am now uh, aware of the new ones. So it's, it's a very exciting process for me to revisit some of the old uh, buildings like the um, a pavilion from 2000 and then seeing um, many new ones that are coming to life. Um, Bill, um, I really appreciate uh, this, this contribution really as an opening lecture um, uh, from you. Um, um, now I'll turn to our audience, um, our guests uh, who might want to ask questions, please type them in the chat box if you would uh, as well in our, um, for our audience in watching, following us on YouTube uh, right now. Uh, we'll collect them and then direct those questions to uh, Murat Tabanoğlu uh, or any of my colleagues here who are hosting, co-hosting. If they want to chip in and ask any questions, please, you're welcome. We have, I think, another 10, 15 minutes at least to, um, to um, you know, use this opportunity uh, <laughs> uh, to... Um, you know, have a, a follow-up conversation. Um, maybe to begin with, um, I am, um, well, thinking of uh, when I was grow. I mean, when I was an architecture student, maybe it was already changing the cities and everything uh, in terms of how they're shaping up today, uh, Murat Hocam. Uh, but um, um, especially nowadays, when I'm looking from the lens of our architecture students, and then when I when they're seeing touring Istanbul, they're seeing more and more private enclaved developments, residential developments, for instance. I mean, in your project, you have this insistence on offering a sense of public space. I think a sense of shared space uh, that you bring that either in the form of internal winter gardens in a house or you create this uh, by, you know, by the seashore as part of your project, not as passive um, you know, uh, public spaces, but also through activity. So I'm thinking at a time when governments really retreat from such social tasks, when they don't do regulate any longer uh, and things are more and more privatized, um, I think the architect's responsibility is even uh, more on their shoulders. Um, I just want, uh, if you can elaborate on that, the changing role of the architect, if we are now need to be more responsible to offer such uh, options to the clients, to the contractors, look, this is a good thing. You know, if you have public spaces and shared spaces, and this is a, a program that would benefit the whole city and everything, how do you negotiate that? How do you push your agenda to be more, you know, um, to create something that is going to be good for everybody, not only for that uh, specific person uh, or people. Uh, so I'm, I'm just wondering how you're accomplishing that and what, what are the challenges now uh, awaiting our students uh, regarding that aspect? Uh, thank you very much. 
Thank you. I hope my question makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. Uh, I think, first of all, you should not negotiate. So you, you, make, you, you should make it like it is very normal. So I make it like this, or I learned this with the time, of course. So if you start uh, to negotiate and if you ask the people how to make it, then of course they will say mostly negative things. So it's better to think positive. For example, the main problem of the Atatürk Cultural Center was uh, there was only one director and some people, and when there was no nothing on the stage, so. Really, he had the key I saw, and then he closed the building. So nobody was able to go inside, not even for an exhibition, uh, just to, to take a ticket maybe. And then he closed the building. And that was always my problem. I was very happy when Hanru was uh, in the Istanbul Biennale, first time opening the foyers of the cultural center for us. That's my baby in Gezi Park. Everybody wanted to go inside. <laughs> because many years it was not able to go to inside it was closed so then i said first the model is very important how you manage the building and uh, now uh, when you will come it will be open and also the, the second part i showed you this new entrance from the technical university it's a part of the city so it's a building that you can need, go underneath um, but I had this problem many years ago in Canyon. When we designed the Canyon, normally it should be an open one. But then, as you remember, we had all these terrorist attacks in the world, also in Istanbul. Uh, the, the, uh, the municipality and the Wali League, so the government said we have to make doors. And now, uh, some days ago, the governor was there uh, from Istanbul. I said to them, we made everything open. I hope you are not close. And then he was loving. So it's a part of the street. So I hope it will stay like this. So as you said, as an architect, you can uh, you have to think solutions like this. Even if this was it, it's a private land, and uh, so uh, you can be against as an architect to say. I saw, for example, a nice building in Hamburg in, again in Harbor City where it belongs to the biggest holdings in, in Germany, but uh, the ground floor is open for public. So you can go through the building and then you can reach the nice part of the sea. Uh, there's a nice coffee house. Also, they are showing what they are doing in the world. So it's a showcase for them. It's, they are open uh, for everybody. Everybody can go through. So it's a part of the streets. And I think if you, as an architect, um, if you are coming with these ideas, nobody will say no. If there is not a big problem of the security. I think buildings should be a part of our cities, open for everybody. Thank you very much um, uh, for this answer. I, I totally agree with you. Um, and I hope that our students are uh, reflecting on this uh, really uh, while they're listening. And, but I also encourage them to chip in and ask questions. I see uh, at least a few of them I know from my studio, a third year studio. Um, please do uh, type your questions here or through YouTube. Um, um, for some reason, they're being shy. <laughs> I think in general. And they are um, all black. I see only <laughs> names and nobody is opening. Yeah. Why, yeah, Why they are closing? Um, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've uh, made their uh, um, uh, we've made their technically uh, maybe off, yeah, technically ah, maybe okay uh, okay it's, it's the settings not because they're shying away from <laughs> okay. opening their videos um, maybe I'll I'll just pick up uh, pick up names I don't know I don't want to do that as a hoja attitude but <laughs> uh, Uyku, I see here you um, um, you know all of them. I think you know. No, no, not all of them yet. I'm uh, quite new <laughs> here as well, but uh, some of them in my in my section. Um, uh, or any other audience uh, members of our audience, um, please do re um, type your questions on the chat box. Um, I, I know we've closed the uh, <laughs> options. And maybe there are some, uh, let's say, 
like from other countries, like Tanya Felser, for example. I Tanya, think. yeah, is, is, is working with us. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, she she's just no. Maybe a student. Us. She's not from Istanbul, or he's not ah. from Istanbul. Okay, <laughs> I I see a question here. Sabri uh, Hoca, uh, who is the um, chair of uh, architecture at uh, Kadir Has, um, he I'm just reading his question from here. Considering this current state of urban design, we have seen buildings emerging as nested cities within cities. Uh, Peter Trammer, I'm hoping I uh, pronounce his name correctly, called this as the death of urbanism. Where do you position the role of building as an act of transforming the city and building as an entity that reacts and changes its environment? Um, that's his question. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he can't elaborate more because it's a written text. Um, would you like me to... Uh, I think you can also have access to the chat uh, box, uh, but they, you can see that mm -hmm. uh, question as well. Nested cities, cities within cities. Um, um, so do we have the role to transform the city any longer or um, the building as an entity that reacts and changes the environment? Ah, Sabri Hocam is here. Mm -hmm. Sabri, is still some, if you want. Sorry, Maybe I, you can uh, open a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I yeah. tried to write it really fast, but my yeah, question was <laughs> my question was about um, what does Mr. Tabanlola think about the current interplay between urbanism and architecture? We have seen buildings as uh, becoming bigger and bigger and, you know, encapsulating the identity of cities. Like you have a shopping mall, you have uh, housing, accommodation, hotels, offices, uh, gyms, like basically the building becomes so big and so complex that it hosts all the activities that we have to find in a city. So it starts acting like a city itself. So I was wondering um, throughout your practice, you have also seen this kind of new trend and probably um, you have seen the complexity of dealing with certain urban projects, but how do you right now weigh the relationship between urbanism and architecture? And uh, where do you think the building um, as, as an act of transforming its environment and as an act of architect building something, like how does it impact the way uh, we change or we uh, take role in changing our cities right now? Like I, wanna, I want to get your insight on the relationship between architecture and urbanism a bit. Um, I remember when I was invited many years ago, he was a friend of me. Um, he passed away, but he is the founder Esat Edin um, of uh, Kemer country. You remember, this is, I think, uh, Kemer in this area, Göktürk is one of the biggest uh, new areas of Istanbul. And uh, when I was there, he showed me many architects' proposals from, I think it was from Leon Kriar um, uh, to some other Turkish architects. And um, I was surprised because that was the first time I saw a real gated community in outside of Istanbul. And um, uh, maybe he was a starter of a new city. Um, of course, in the same time, they made cities like Başakşehir and others, we you know, all of them, and mostly on the highways. <laughs> and um, then now we have, I think, many, many gate cities, uh, gated cities like in the States mostly. But if you go more to Europe, um, I think there are not so many gated cities, maybe little. Um, I think that's coming maybe. I asked always to them, why gated city? Are you afraid that people are coming? Then people... Uh, they are working with us, um, advising us to make these uh, new neighborhoods, uh, saying, uh, otherwise we cannot sell uh, apartments. I said, do you ask the people? No, well, it's not uh, secure. So, but is Nishantashi not the most secure place in Istanbul and one of the most, or Bebek? They are not gated cities. They are apartments and uh, there is a small barber shop or um, grocery underneath and uh, there is maybe just an alarm but it's not gated city so uh, and I think these people are also seeing 
uh, with the time that uh, we don't want to be in these gated cities. So uh, we want to be, I'm living now in Bebek since many years uh, with my girlfriend together and then with uh, our daughters, they are coming and, and then we are happy to be in the neighborhood. You know, that's very important to be a part of the neighborhood. So you know where you shop, little shop, you go to your barber shop, you eat there. And in gated cities, these are very, everything is very too much organized, you know? So it's it's a small market. Of course, uh, I don't have a gym here, but uh, <laughs> I can walk, you know? Uh, okay, I don't, um, you know what I mean? So maybe these gated cities are more, let's say luxurious, you have these lounges and TV areas, but it's better to go to have a coffee house and see, to be with the other people. It's, uh, it's why uh, I think uh, people are learning from mistakes. Uh, we, we learned a lot of, I think after this pandemic uh, time also, they closed us in our houses. <laughs> uh, so we learned to, to make also different and not only as architects, also the clients learned also. And now in my new projects, uh, I'm making something new uh, next to here. And um, they are also thinking differently, believe me. And they have to think otherwise. Uh, and all these uh, gated uh, cities, they will break their walls and it, they must be a part of the cities. And all these shopping centers, like in the States, they will die and then we will transfer them to other purposes. Thank you very much, uh, Thank you. both of you. Uh, Sondan Hoca has a question in the chat box that I'm reading. Uh, Murat Hocam, how do you convince the business people about your design projects? They are profit-driven, but you are not. <laughs> the secret of your success, I guess. <laughs> the secret formula that you have to share with us. <laughs> I think there is first of all I never asked somebody for for a job so they came to me and asked for a, even the um, uh, from the opera house till to the bodrum loft or others uh, uh, they are either we make competitions uh, they are invited competitions or open competitions and um, I'm not a typical competition winner, but invited ones I like more. Uh, they pay you from the front, which is nice. <laughs> when it's an open company, uh, maybe you, you work two, three months and take nothing. But young people must uh, make this. I made this for Bodrum, for example, for Bodrum Airport many years ago. Now the building is there and some other buildings. And, um, and I think... Uh, I'm describing them not only with words, also with uh, maybe concept. And I always say, if this is not a competition, make a flirting face. Uh, so it's like Beyonce. So you are just two, three months together. And if you have a nice electricity uh, in this flirting time, and then I say to them, maybe you like what we design, but uh, let's um, look also to the budget budget for me and budget for the building and then uh, and then you can see if this is feasible because uh, it can be a nice model or a nice rendering or nice sketch but maybe I'm not the, many times I say to the clients maybe I'm not the right architect or I'm not the right person to design a building for here you know what I mean maybe it's um, uh, and many times I say, I don't want to design for this, or I don't want. That's very important. So as an architect, um, uh, I think you should make things that you like, or you can do. Otherwise, you should not do the design. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other questions? I wonder, I'm looking at the chat box right now. Um, not seeing any. We have an exceptionally shy audience tonight. So, um, uh, Sondana just says, thank you very much. I have a very poor connection. Um, thank you, Hojan. 
I think on YouTube we don't we haven't received any either. All right. Um, otherwise, I think we'll be um, putting. Um, I mean, we'll be ending the uh, event for tonight. Uh, if unless there is a very last minute uh, question from our audience, um, yeah, <laughs> I knew this was going to happen from a student. Hello, yeah. I missed you. My question is: uh, When starting a new project, what motivates you? How do you solve the problems that may occur in the project? It's a very generalized question, but uh, especially the thing about motivation, I think, is important, mm -hmm. right? What motivates you and how do you solve the problems as, as, as you face them throughout the design process? Mm -hmm. I think the uh, motivation is the main point for an architect. If you are not motivated, uh, you cannot make a good design. And as you can see, every project I showed you, uh, it's different. Some architects make similar things. Like if you look to the projects of Richard Meyer or Aldo Rossi, or uh, they are similar. Uh, Richard Meyer made uh, dream houses many years ago in the States. He made them similar ones in Bodrum after years. Only two are, of them are built. So he made white, everything is white uh, or chipper field is he makes similar buildings for me this is a little bit boring it's also nice architecture but i like uh, how herzog de Meron is designing or other architects like rem colas so every time it's a new research new study and new uh new ideas and i think every project is for me a new prototype i think this is a, that makes me happy and um, ex, uh, then I stay young and fresh. I think that's very important. Thank you very much. And IBK, thank mm -hmm. you for your question. Um, I, I guess we'll conclude uh, uh, for, for this evening. Uh, I just want to say um, before saying uh, uh, thank you again uh, to Murat Tavanoğlu for being with us and to all others who are, who, who are with us also as an audience and who helped organize this uh, event. Um, the website for uh, the joint uh, graduate program, um, architecture and urban studies program uh, without thesis, uh, centering on the theme of research and design in port cities, uh, led and coordinated by Murat Tabanoğlu. The website, if you wanna check it out, if you're interested, it's uh, portcities.khas.edu.tr. He closed his voice. <laughs> so feel free to uh, roam around and uh, share, uh, ask us any questions if you have. Uh, and also Ali Dur uh, Hoca uh, from the architecture department who is uh, uh, running the academic coordinatorship and will be happy to answer any questions about prospective students. Uh, but um, thank you uh, for this wonderful evening. Uh, thank you, uh, Murat Bey, Murat Hocam. <laughs> Uh, we're hoping to see you around here uh, very soon uh, as we're going to be accepting our first students in the spring, hopefully. And uh, thank you, everybody else. Um, should I be closing it or Yeshim Hanım siz mi? I'll give the floor to you. <laughs> and then yes, I would uh, like to. Thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, Murat Bey and all of you for this interesting talk tonight. This is the first of the series. Uh, please keep following us on our social media accounts of Kadiras University and on, on our YouTube channel. If you have missed or if any of your friends missed tonight's talk, it will be available later on YouTube. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. See you all next time. <laughs>